Welcome back to the Indie Critic, the show on the internet where we never actually talk about indie games. And on today's episode, I have a, I have, I have a little question for you. Do you, by chance, happen to remember Homefront? Because, uh, I sure as fuck wish that I didn't remember Homefront. Homefront was a game developed by my boys at Chaos Studios. A studio who developed Frontline's Fuel of War. A game I have never played, and uh, if it's anything like Homefront, thank fuck I didn't, or else I'd probably be dead. The early 2010s was an incredibly successful time for the Call of Duty series, as well as Battlefield series, with releases like COD 4, MW2, Black Ops 1, fucking Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. You can make a serious argument that this was the golden age of the FPS genre. However, something we talk a lot about on this channel is with great successful series, we get a slew of terrible garbage. And Homefront is king of the garbage. It is very easy to tell when something is created as just a cash grab. However, Homefront takes this to a whole new level. Not only is it the king of imitation garbage, it is also the king of product placement. Contractor, no, I will not bow to any sponsor. I'm dead serious. There is an entire fucking level that takes place inside or around a Tiger Direct. A Tiger fucking Direct. I've never seen anything like it before. Literally, you're just walking through this dark fucking apartment, all right? There's bad guys in there, it's dingy, there's no lights. You open the door and you're greeted with the bright, reassuring, fully lit Tiger Direct sign. It's beautiful. The way that it's portrayed in this game makes it look like a natural wonder of the world. I feel like I'm at fucking Niagara Falls right now, baby. Seriously, how many games do you remember having product placement in them like this? And I'm, I'm not talking like small product placement like uh, fucking Rainbow Six uh, Vegas, okay? I'm talking an entire fucking level that takes place inside of a Tiger Direct. Literally, you fight outside the Tiger Direct, then you fight slightly closer to the Tiger Direct, then you fight through the Tiger Direct, then you fight outside the Tiger Direct at a fucking Hooters? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just shooting fucking terrorists and a goddamn Hooters, because you can do it in this game, and it's beautiful. And then after you're done killing all the terrorists in the Hooters, you gotta go back through the Tiger Direct. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It was, it was, it was the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. I've, I have not played a game in 10 years that have made me feel more happy than fighting through a Tiger Direct to then go and fight people in a Hooters to then go and run back through a Tiger Direct. It was, it was fantastic. It blew my fucking mind. It blew my mind. I felt like I was watching a Transformers movie. That's how many product placements were put in it. Fantastic. So, throughout this entire mission, your characters are only referring to the Tiger Direct as the store. And this is probably the case because prior to it being in the Tiger Direct, it was actually a Circuit City, which is a company that was bought out by Tiger Direct. So yeah, sure, you can see them slipping the, the Tiger Direct in there instead of having the Circuit City logo there. But what's even funnier than that is before it was a Circuit City, it was a, a, a Lumber Liquidators. A company that sells hardwood flooring. What the fuck? This is by far the second best part in the entire game. And do you want to know the best part in the game? Well, it's the point in the next mission where your characters are screaming, get inside the White Castle. When I heard that line, I shook to the fucking core. I look up and I'm greeted with the beautiful undamaged sign of a fucking white castle. Like, honestly, I'd recommend this game to everyone just because of the fucking product placements. I mean, when have you ever fought Koreans in a fucking Hooters and a fucking white castle and a motherfucking Tiger Direct? It, it doesn't fucking happen ever. And it's so funny. It's it's, oh my, oh my God, fuck. <laughs> and this isn't even close to all the product placements in the game. 
We have cabinets to go, Jansport, another Hooters sign, a coffee beanie, another Tiger Direct, Diablo guns, a Paps Blue Ribbon, another Tiger Direct, and another Tiger Direct. And you know what? I probably missed some because there's so fucking many in this game. Nothing turns me on more than a good old product placement in a video game. And just so you know, that if you quit playing during the Tiger Direct mission and you go back to the main menu, you're greeted with a beautiful Tiger Direct right on the main menu. It's fantastic. What a what a, what a great fucking video game. The only thing that could possibly rival the product placement in this game would have to be the dev blogs. And let me tell you, when I found these dev interviews, it felt like I just discovered the Mormon's golden fucking plates. These interviews are fucking hilarious. You can find so many just stupid fucking things that these people say, like Blow into a place, you know, a slum or something like that, and you kill a hundred people, and at the end of the level you jump into a helicopter and fly away. You know, at the end of our levels, there's no helicopter. You have to stay and live with the things that you did. And here we are, at the end of this mission, where it ends in a fucking helicopter as you fly away from all of your problems after killing hundreds of Americans. It's beautiful. It's like poetry. Or how about this one? In average FPS, you'll blow through 30 to 100 guys every 15 to 20 minutes or so. And you sort of get this, um, this what we call massacre fatigue. When you, you stop even caring, you don't even realize that you're, you're killing humans. Guys, in case you didn't know, your entire game takes place down single small corridors where you shoot hundreds of enemies within a 10 minute span. You cannot possibly tell me that these developers didn't think that that is how their game played because it is objectively how it is. Fuck, it is beautiful. I love interviews with devs about their games because the interviews tend to age so much worse than the games. And when the games age like shit, the interviews, it's a gold mine, baby, let me tell you. Oh, and by the way, who let this through? Seriously, guys, come on, you can just layer your sprites properly, what the fuck? I'm gonna talk a little bit about the actual game since some people on this channel like to listen about the game, I guess. I don't know what you guys like, actually, nobody likes this channel, let's just be fucking real. Well, the campaign is three hours long, and that's me taking my time. Like, a lot of time. Like, dying on purpose as a joke kind of time. You could probably beat this game in under two hours, experiencing all of the beautiful wonders of the product placement, from fighting Koreans in a Hooters, to fighting Koreans in a White Castle, to blowing up a Tiger Direct in all less than two hours, and still get all of your money back on Steam. That's how short the campaign is. It's, it's fucking incredible. Each mission plays out exactly the same. There is no freedom or ability to express the playstyle that you most enjoy, like sniping, or flanking the enemy, or running in fucking bullshit gun ho with a fucking SMG. You, you can't really do any of that. The game is all about fighting down one very restrictive corridor. And th that's it. The only mission that really deviates from this would be the helicopter mission. And that's not really a, a high praise when you can literally point the nose of the helicopter straight at the ground and, and still be holding the perfect hover. <laughs> Absolutely stunning mechanics. Speaking of mechanics and holy shit, this game controls like shit. You can't sprint and strafe at the same time. And I can hear you bitching already, Damien, 2010 shooters, you couldn't fucking sprint and strafe anyways. And you'd be partially correct, sure. But the ones that you could, like Call of Duty MW2, have aged beautifully. Why try to rip off the Call of Duty formula, but then forget about the advancements that it made in the movement system? Objectively, Call of Duty has made serious, serious strides with their movement system and how FPS games should move and feel. And with MW2 coming out in what was that, 2009 it came out I think? They had plenty of time to implement the movement systems in MW2. And movement systems play such a huge role in the longevity of a game, and I, like dead serious, for real, 
because I still find myself going back and playing MW2 and it does not feel like an old game. But if I go back and I play Bad Company 2 where you can't strafe while sprinting, it feels like an older game and I'm less inclined to go and play that than Modern Warfare 2 from the same time period. Movement mechanics are huge. Way bigger than anyone actually fucking talks about in the in, in games. Literally, I, I feel like it has more of an impact than the general story. If you can nail the fucking, fucking movement mechanics, people will keep playing your game 10 years into the future. I'll be doing a video essay on the movement mechanics of games in the near future, like coming weeks, so nobody take my fucking idea because the amount of time the motherfucker has taken my goddamn ideas for a video, posted the video like two days before I record mine, fuck, it pisses me off, and motherfucker, I'll kill you, I got a real fucking gun! This is a fake gun. This is a model gun that I made myself and I painted it but I'll kill you with it. Speaking about guns, the gunplay in Homefront is fucking atrocious. And the sound design is pitiful. Literally, the sound from my fake gun is more realistic than the sound of the guns in Homefront. I, listen to this shit, this is a real gun. And you cannot tell me that the sound design of these games is bad because of the time, because games like World at War and fucking Bad Company 2 have some of the most amazing sound design, even compared to games from today. Plus, the guns in Homefront just feel boring. And the sound design really doesn't help them at all, because they literally all sound exactly the same. Anyways, enough with the guns. Let's talk a little bit more about the animations in the game, which are fucking beautiful. Like, just, just, just look at Rihanna try to kill this guard. It's fucking beautiful. This is the exact quality that I want in my AAA games. Damien, what about the multiplayer? The multiplayer is fucking dead. What do you, what do you want from me, all right? I just play the dead games, okay? I'm not a fucking necromancer. With the massive success of Homefront, THQ fired and dropped Chaos Studios, and then swiftly went out of business. So, we'll never have to play another Homefront game again. Right? Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I had a fucking blast making this video like this was actually so much fun it's kind of like a kind of like a mix between like an old indie critic style video and like a the a mix of like my newer shit i just think that it's fucking super fun man like this was so much fun to make and i i, I hope to make more of this remember series and um if if you see anyone else making any content like it that's any similar fucking take this fake gun all right and kill them with it because this is my series and I hate when people steal my ideas. All right, we need to hit, how many subscribers do I have? 414, I wanna hit 500 subscribers. I don't know why that number or why I'm holding the series hostage until 500 subscribers, but I want 500 subscribers. So subscribe to me or else you get the gun. Don't make me, bring out the gun. It's actually a pretty nice little model, man. It's a pretty nice little model. It's very light. It's very light. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Dark again for supporting me on Patreon. Yes! You guys can go check me out over on Patreon at patreon.com slash... I don't know what it is. The Indie Critic or Indie Critic Show? Patreon.com slash Indie Critic Show. I think that's it. Uh, if not, there'll be a link in the description and a link on the screen. Go on over there and uh, support me and whatnot. It, it costs a lot of money to make these videos. $80 a month for fucking video software. Are you serious? What the fuck, man? What the fuck, man? I'm going bankrupt, man. I'm going bankrupt over here. I'm gonna end up like THQ if you don't support me on Patreon. Also, go check out the Twitter. Actually, Twitter is more important. Go check out the Twitter, okay? I tweet a lot. It's, it's, it's wonderful. I piss off everyone. Forge Labs hates me now because he fucking 
sees my tweets all goddamn day. He's like, this guy tweets way too much. I'm definitely on the muted list for Forge Labs. Fuck. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.